When he wins, this is the starting lineup, which has been a revolving door, really, for both teams. I think I've done six Dayton games this year, and the starting lineup has probably been different in five of those six games, and I think you could say the same thing about Frank Martin's UMass team. About this sport, you form bonds for the rest of your life, and you have two teams that, you have first matchup, but you know these coaches have been following each other's teams. I think UMass is going to give Dayton a heck of a game time. All right, Dayton controls the tip. We're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man from the Minutemen, but we're also going to see a matchup 2-3 zone, which was extravagant today at shoot-around. Mara hands the ball off to Elvis. Elvis with that big bulky knee brace. Shot clock under 10. Malachi Smith to Brea. Brea can fire the three. Off the high screen. Step back three-pointer. It's good. Nothing but that. Yeah, Brea took six of those last out against Loyola. He only made one, but that is his identity. He is a shooter. That's a really strong start. Dayton's won their last three ball. Yeah, in fact, they've done it with a combination of good offense, but really solid defense as well. Here's Luis wearing that face mask. He got an elbow in the George Mason game. They couldn't stop the bleeding. They don't think his nose was broken during that, but he's got to wear that mask. They go down low to Levesque. Levesque has it, I guess, misdirected as it goes out of bounds. It'll be Dayton basketball. Did you ever play with a, a mask on when you were playing the basketball? I did not. I, you know, Richard Hamilton made it famous. He wore it one season for the Pistons, and then he kept on wearing it even though he didn't have to. <laughs> So, it, you know, athletes are superstitious. You know that. Here's the thing, though. If, if you knew you were going to get into broadcasting, you should have worn it for a few games just to see how it felt so you could talk about it. <laughs> Maybe I'll put a mask on after the game with this makeup on. Duran Holmes to the basket, lays it in. That's what he can do. He's athletic. And Frank Martin said something interesting today, Tim. They weren't going to double-team him the way normal teams double-team him. Well, that's the game plan, right? And everyone had a game plan against Mike Tyson until, right, you get punched in the mouth, right. and then you got to adjust that. So that one was a little bit too easy down low. Levesque, the turnaround, hook shot, no good. So he's missed two about three or four feet from the basket. 5 nothing. Dayton's on top. Malachi Smith running the point. Gray had thought about it. But instead, works the perimeter. Holmes. They want to run the offense through Holmes. Got clock at seven. Holmes up off the glass. It's blocked away. And I believe that's going to be basket interference. Yeah, I don't think that ball was going in. I don't think it was either. And you see Holmes there. No double. Well, no problem. <laughs> that's certain shot, too. Um, but yeah, this is not the start UMass wanted. This is exactly the start Dayton wanted. Yeah, they do call basket interference, so it is seven nothing. Dayton is on top. That was interesting. Because I'm with you, I don't think it was going close. Going to be close to going in. Once it's up on the backboard, you can't touch it. You know, it's, it's actually an easy call for the officials. Levesque back to the basket. There's that little hedge by Dayton. Levesque again. So he's taken three, he's missed all three. You wonder if a basket here, if you get a timeout for Frank Martin. Yeah, down seven already. Here's Brea, Brea to the free throw line to the logo. Floater is good, it's nine nothing. Dayton. Well, would you call a timeout, you think? I would. Flow? I would, just because you don't all of a sudden want this to be 15 nothing. Weeks, left handed three, no good. Off the back of the iron, Levesque with the rebound. Feeds it underneath, and Louise is able to touch it off the glass. And that's why I'm sitting over here, not calling timeouts on the other side. <laughs> uh, so blows, and Kamara is going to go to the free throw line. Levesque is going to be called for the foul. It's a really good look here by Levesque. Nice touch. Uh, he had his previous career. He was at South Carolina, and we see that a bunch of transfers following Frank up here to Amherst, where he admitted to us that it's not going to be the same Frank Martin maybe you saw earlier in his career when he was 2010 Big 12 Coach of the Year, or the fiery leader that he was at, at South Carolina, getting them to a Final Four in 2017. I'll say it, he didn't say it. It's a matured Frank Martin on the <laughs> sideline. It's a reserved Frank Martin, but he certainly had his moments today in shoot around, didn't he? He sure did. He was into it big time. That ball's deflected, and Elvis will pick it off after the two made free throws by Kamara. Here's Kamara, quick first step, cut off, pivoting off the glass. The block by Levesque says, get out of here. 
There's Louise. Louise will jump stop. That's a tough shot. And you can just see Louise in every game growing more and more confident. And it also helps when you have a shorter bench that you know you could take a shot or two and there's going to be some wiggle room, meaning you're not going to get that quick. Absolutely. Double figures in nine of his last 11 games. Kamara back in his way in. Lebec already has one foul. Kamara over the top of him off the front of the rim. Four minutes into this first half, seven-point lead for the Flyers. Keon Thompson covered by Malachi Smith. UMass likes the high-low. They haven't been able to get it, though, and Louise misses on that three to the outside. In fact, he hasn't made a three-pointer since the 25th of January. Yeah, both these teams like to go high-low. Yeah. And you, you have guys that obviously know each other in the head coaches, and, you know, their styles mimic each other a bit in that way. Duran Holmes back in his way against Kante. Holmes doesn't get the roll. Kamara, though, is able to clean it up and lay it in. Kamara's averaging over 11 rebounds his last four games, and nobody in the A-10 averages more per game than him, and you see why. Using that body, that lower half, to dislodge his opponent. I thought it was interesting listening to Frank Martin talk about Kamara. said, yeah, he's a totally different player than he was at Georgia when I faced him when I was at South Carolina. Levesque can't get that one to go. Louise with the rebound off the glass, gets the roll off the side of the rim. Well, you're right about Louise. I mean, he's figured some stuff out these last few games. And, and that's what Frank Martin's building here, right? You got Louise, a freshman, and out of his hometown there in Miami, and you know, I think Frank has a, a piece to that puzzle as he builds the culture. Bray is shot fake. He does that better than anybody. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Levesque. Dayton has come into this game three straight W's and their strength is playing bully ball on the inside. I think it's the thing I miss most about being in a locker room, being on a team. And it's the thing as you get older that you appreciate are your former teammates in the moments that you spend with them off the field. Yes. All this off the back of the iron. Malachi Smith tips it to unseal. Malachi's open. He'll take it down. And it's off the side of the rim. You kind of feel like this is an important possession for UMass. Gets a little momentum going, kind of weathered that storm. Malachi Smith with the steal, but he was out of bounds. And yeah. la last out, they were outstanding, UMass. They held Rhode Island on the road. They were to 45 points. It was actually their largest A-10 road win since 1996. And in 1996, talked about Frank Martin looking different. I heard you look much different in 1996. I did have some hair. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and I were on the same vein. We both had hair. <laughs> Here's Louise. Louise has all the points so far, and Levesque is fouled on the floor. They're going to get R.J. Blakeney on that foul for Dayton. Yeah, it, it, good, good call. It, that was interesting because Blakeney raised his hand. They got the foul. Kamara, Kamara, yeah, yeah, he knew. He's like, I'll take the foul. Yeah, you don't want Kamara to get into foul trouble. Sewell Diggins in for the first time. Levesque spin move along the baseline. Boy, he's really trying to operate his offense. And there it is, the kiss off the glass. Five-point game. He was a big-time recruit coming out of high school. Started at South Carolina. And he's actually been all over the floor. He's blocked a few shots. He's goaltending. He's been active in this game. This is a challenge game for him going up against two of the best big men in basketball. Is able to get him to misdirect that shot tomorrow. That is so Dayton made its first four field goals and now one for its last six. Leaving the door open, Louise pull up jumper on the baseline. No good. This is for Anthony Grant. This is where you want Kamara to get a touch. Malachi Smith slides right to the basket. Unless you get somebody that can burn to the hoop like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the seas split like that for the sophomore out of the Bronx. Everybody from the Bronx, they can dribble and put the ball on the floor. Shooting can sometimes be optional mm. because when you play outside and there's no nets on the hoop, you try to get as close to the basket as you can possible. This from a Long Island guy saying that, right? <laughs> this is true. I did take a, a few pilgrimages up there to play. Dominguez, who missed his last game with an illness, missed the first shot he gets. 
Flakey, shot fake, and a good one. Heading to the rim off the glass. And a blocking foul is called on Levesque. And that's going to be his second personal foul. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Levesque and his activity. Naked eye looked like it was a charge. I agree with you. Now let's see it again. We have the privilege. Yeah, like he was already in that downward motion, but now so many times, Tom, if you're the defender and you get outside that circle, 97% of the time you're going to get that call. Mm. Lately to the free throw line, makes the first one. He's a 72% free throw shooter. Smith will check out. Kamara will check out. Deron Holmes back in. Lakeney has missed the last couple. He's been battling a lower leg injury, and it seems like Dayton has been battling all kinds of injuries all year long. Dominguez will pull it out. Thought about a three. I thought they took a chance on that long pass to get it down the floor. I think if you're Frank Martin, you want to try to get some easy baskets. This is not the strength of UMass is getting deep in shot clock. So that ball's kicked by Deron Holmes, so they'll reset it to 20. I really like RJ Luis. He reminds me a little bit of a Juan Dixon type, a little bit taller, but he moves effortlessly. Pull up jump shot. He's missed a few of them as of late, but he's a guy who's really grown with confidence. Mm. Now, if he keeps playing well with the mask, does he keep it? I mean, you saw Richard Hamilton did. I don't know. I would think it would be somewhat cumbersome to keep that on all the time. Kapari, his three is no good. Ball is loose, and I'm seal with the rebound. Kapari with that three. He's only made 12 this year. I'm seal to Holmes, and Holmes a traveling violation. Well, it's 17 8. Dayton is on top with 11 38 to play here in the first half. Duran. Yeah, I mean, St. Louis has been up and down, right? They went to Fordham and they had a loss. I think Dayton, my opinion, I know it doesn't count for much, but that is the best team in the Atlantic 10. Last time they played VCU, they knocked them off. And of course, lost to them earlier this year. It was an easily a game they could have won. When healthy, you know, it's a big if. That's the best team in the A 10 you're watching right now. 11 20 to play here in the first half. UMass has got over two minutes since their last bucket. Thompson's three is no good. And I'm seal with the rebound for Dayton. Lebeck is on the bench. So that means that Conte and DePara are the big men for UMass. Ray, quick first step, little jab. Got some separation. On the seal, loose off the glass, no good. Rebound is tipped around. And Brandon Martin, Frank's son, pulls down the rebound. Well, oh, there's a three rhythm by TJ Weeks, and it's good. And half his field goals this year have been threes. Shoots right around 34% from the three-point line. He shot that ball and he shoots 50%. I, I got to tell you, you we, we, we go to practices and shoot-arounds and we hear points of contention by coaches, and they said over and over again, do not allow C.J. Weeks to get into the open floor to take a shot, and that's exactly what he did. Shot clock is at four. Bray doesn't realize it. Holmes for three. Off the front of the rim. Rebound is pulled down by Weeks. And up the floor, snaking to the middle. Good entry pass. Conte is a blocked away by Amsil. Excellent seal, better defense. Help side. Really good seal. Holmes trying to do the same thing for Dayton. Lakeley looked at Holmes for a moment. Holmes wants it. Shot clock is at five again. Lakeney bumps into the defender. That's an offensive foul. Anthony Grant is not happy about that call. So each coach 
has disputed a call today. You know, Blakely, he got the first one where, you know, we were talking about was that a block or a charge? He ends up getting that one, and it's almost like referees remember that stuff. They have that in the back of their mind. There's Brandon Martin, Frank's son. We asked Frank today about having Brandon Martin and Levesque on this team. Both guys have played in South Carolina. Does it make it easier? And he said it's definitively made it easier because I can get on guys and those two guys will be able to say, hey, listen, this is what he's talking about. And they get his system, too, and what he wants to do. DePar, three no good. Well, they're struggling from beyond the arc. Dayton has not scored in a little more than three minutes. That is why it's a low scoring game. This is that double baseline side. That's how Frank Martin likes the double on that baseline. Holmes, well, he was in traffic and was able to get it off the glass. Yeah, he's slippery down there and just finds those creases to get to his spot. That's not Conte's shot. In fact, practice day, right? They were giving the guy up top, the big man, plenty of room. They were sagging defensively. Martin loses it, and he's fouled going up by Kamara. Yeah, watch how Deron Holmes, there is not a ton of room here, but he just slides his body, kind of contorts it in a way to get the shot off. Great use of his shoulder. He was an outstanding young man. I talked to him before the game and grew up in the Phoenix area. Huge Kevin Durant fan. And now he's morphed more into a Nick Claxton Star center is having a breakout year for the Brooklyn Nets and because that center position is not like Tom when you and I were growing up The traditional post up on the block at the next level now The NBA level you got to be able to screen catch alley-oops dive He may end up being a better pro than he is college player because he's such a great athlete And I appreciate you including me in the basketball conversation about when we were younger well, I mean, I know when you started playing, there was no three-point line. It there was, was like, not. Yeah, Someone came out and poked the ball out of the hoop after every hoop. <laughs> Martin makes the second free throw. It's a seven-point game. Kamara, by the way, has two fouls, so that's why he's on the bench right now for Dayton. Dayton does not have a lot of depth. Holmes swings it. Well, this... That's a tough pass. I don't think it was supposed to go to Holmes. Shot clock is at five. Malachi Smith has it popped around. Keon Thompson. Weeks from way downtown. Yes. Well, he on the bench with two personal fouls, which means Dayton's playing a little smaller. You have Malachi Smith running the point. He's been bothered by so many ankle injuries the last year or so. Elvis left wide open, gets everybody off their feet, and that was just a breakdown. What a great pass, though, by Holmes. Uh, kind of seeing over the top of the defense, put it in a position where only Elvis could catch it. Anthony Grant told us that he's worried about UMass's physicality in this ballgame, but he's got 14 points in the paint, so maybe that answers a little of his concerns. It helps that Levesque is out with two fouls early in this game. Ball's tipped off the leg of Amsio and out of bounds. No change of possession as Dominguez will check back in. Here's Levesque. He just explained to everybody that he has two fouls. He put the two up. Well, that is something that once you have two fouls, coach is going to pull you right out of that game. Quick hands by Louise. To get that one to go. He's got eight points. And Louise is a talent. And now you're going to keep him, right? That's the world of college basketball because if he stays up here playing for a decorated, smart coach like Frank Martin, he is going to have an outstanding career. Holmes left open, and he's fouled from behind. He gets the bucket to go down. It's just an excellent set play. Here's Louise on nice catch and finish. He's so bouncy down low. And then on the flip side, it's a great screen action. And, you know, that's just too easy for you know, one of the best big men in college basketball. You catch that low, it's mercy time. Over 66% for the free throw line. He missed, so he cannot convert the three-point play. 
mentioned that Frank Martin said they weren't going to traditionally double Deron Holmes as Thompson throws the floater up. That's a 23-19. But he would do it by bringing the extra man from the baseline, kind of Bob McKillop style, the old coach uh, at Davidson, the old great coach at Davidson. You know, he gave him credit. I, I think that's amazing. I, when I rip off somebody's joke or somebody's line, I never give him credit. I keep it to myself. That was really cool that Coach Martin did that. Ray will look it in. Not much is there. Shot clock is at three. Elvis doesn't realize it. I'm still with the shot clock at one. And it's a violation. That last out, UMass. Held Rhode Island to 25% from the field. There were four for 25 from three. Mm. You know what percentage that is? Not good. That's not good. <laughs> exactly. 16%. UMass on the flip side just was dominant, and it was really that energy on the defensive end just completely took Rhode Island off of anything they wanted to do. Now the Rams are coming off a tough loss. They just got bounced late by VCU, and they got dominated in that game by UMass. Yeah, Zeb Jackson's game winner for VCU at the buzzer. Frank Martin acknowledged, he said, I, I think Rhode Island was somewhat deflated after that. All right, so each team now with two turnovers after that one. 23-19, under six minutes to play in the first half. Game one of, uh, you know, CBS Sports Network, St. John's Georgetown coming up after this one. Ron Holmes is hooked by Conte. Yeah, they'll go to the free throw line for two. You know, he's listed Holmes at six foot ten. Now basketball players lie about their height. Well, let's see this again. I said that you see Holmes has like almost the hook on Conte. Conte saying he's hooking me. Mm -hmm. Frank Martin is saying the same thing. But I, whenever I see someone's height. From a naked eye, I'm not really sure. I'd go stand next to them. In a kind of a creepy way, because I want to see how tall they actually are. <laughs> because I'm legit six foot five. And Holmes, I thought, was as close to 6'10 as possible. He's very he's wiry too. He wasn't 6'8. It's not like Fletch. Yeah. Here's Dominguez. I step into the basket. He probably should not have reversed his field and gone right up. Six point game. Dayton's on top. Elvis right to the rack. To Brea. And Brea from the baseline doesn't get the roll. I'll take him ripping through with that rebound. Thompson. I think he was shocked he was that open. And the C's just parted there, right? Everyone fanned out, did not stop the ball, but that's the new age college basketball. You're more worried about giving up a three than a two. Thompson with four points. 25 21. Holmes. Single coverage. There's going to be a hedge coming from Dominguez 45. There it is. And Holmes can't convert. It's going to be a four point game here. Yeah. It, you could feel like UMass is growing with confidence every time down the floor. You can just tell Weeks is like dying to shoot the ball. <laughs> Dominguez looking no high low. Weeks to Conte trying to get a quick first step, but he's going to get two free throws. 4.23 to play here in the first half. And Nowecki called for his first foul. So Conte to the free throw line. First free throw is good. I said uh, it was Wokeji was called for the first foul. Conte is a LIU transfer. Interesting enough, he played for Derek Kellogg, who coached at UMass as a head coach years back and is now back at UMass as an assistant coach. Mm. Yeah, Frank Markey, Martin gave a lot of credit to Ryan Bamford, who's the athletic director, who actually fired Derek. There's Derek. 
And he still had his house up here, so it was a comfortable transition back to Amherst. And he played on some amazing UMass teams here. The likes of Lou Rowe and the history. Marcus Canby I and mean, some dynamic squads there in that squad. That was really the heyday. Edgar Padilla, Travieso, I mean, those were national teams. teams. Yep. But the, the league also had, you know, Eddie Jones and Aaron McKee. And Malachi Smith makes this a five-point game with four minutes to play here in the first half. 28-23. Kapara got some space. Well, KG comes down with the rebound. Kapara should have been called for an offensive foul. Oh, maybe, yeah. He kind of. Yeah, you just can't like throw someone out of the way. I like that you how you phrased it though. He got some space. Yeah, right? yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi with the alley oh, nice. Play. Their eyes met, and Duran Holmes able to jam it home. They were working on that uh, that practice today, shoot around today. They for the three minute mark here in the first half. Louise with a shake and bake off the glass. That's the athleticism in midair. Find the body control as well because you get one of the elite athletes in college hoops challenging you and he's able to finish. Five point game, 30 to 25. Dayton is starting to open it up a little bit, make some shots on the drama, unless you can go out there and get them 35 points a game. Yeah, you have to be able to stick for some of these guys. And Jalen Brunson averaged eight points a game his first two years in the NBA. Now, That's what he is with the Knicks. Exactly. All right, so a little zone now for UMass. They did zone and shoot around today. They did box and one on seal for three. It's good. Eight-point lead for Dayton. I mean, that is just textbook as far as getting into the lane, not just throwing the ball out around the perimeter and making that defense converge and banging down a three. So far, Dayton 50% from that three-point range. Let's see if UMass could answer Martin. Trying to get it inside. Conte, not much was there. Martin throws it up and doesn't go down. I'm seal with the rebound. That's four rebounds for Amsiel in nine minutes of work. Point game. UMass had whittled it down to two a few minutes ago. Holmes is working. Conte is called for the foul. That'll be number two on him. So the two big men for UMass each have two fouls. Coming up on ATT in the half, Adam Zucker, Renee Montgomery, Chris Walker, and Gary Parrish will get you caught up with all the action in college basketball. Plus, we'll have first half stats and highlights. That's all coming up on ATT at the half. It's nice that they give John Rothstein off. Like one of the last few days in February. But is he off? <laughs> He's probably somewhere tweeting. I always feel like if I wake up super early, John's up with me. <laughs> At least I have a friend somewhere. Elf is working the outer part of the zone. Turnaround jumpers, no good by Holmes. I'm seal with the rebound. And now they'll reset the offense. UMass going back to a little bit of a matchup here. Malachi Smith banks it home. Yeah, he smiled, which made it sound like he didn't want to bank it, but it looked super smooth from here. It really did. Thompson, pull jumper. It's no good. And another rebound for Amsiel, who's really been working the glass. That's number six for him. Ball's knocked away by Conte. Watch his face because he he shot it like almost like he knew it was gonna go in but look, dance dance put it up but Then the reaction was kind of like a, a wry smile like yeah, I sort of meant to do that He's got seven points. You know, he's you had ankle injuries at all when you played. Yes That's and they why follow I, you right I don't play and now. they follow you right so he, he had the ankle injury last year and then it followed with the other ankle and then it went back to the right ankle, then the left, and then the left again. 
Holmes left open. Wide open. A two headed jam. Now it's up to a 12 point game. The 12 2 run for Dayton. Louise. Difference of five seconds between shot clock and game clock. Louise crosses over. Leaves it down low for Conte. I think he was surprised by it. And a blocking foul is going to be called on Holmes. Well, first of all, I thought Luis had the opportunity to finish. And then great catch by Conte. Holmes is saying he went straight up and down. But how about that last play? It was a set play, and the pass actually got deflected. Yeah. And it bounced, and he still was open, and he was able to finish Holmes with the dunk. Right, so Conte will go to the line for two. Still have a chance with 12.7. Yeah, I think you really saw the effect of not having Wilden's Levesque out there for the majority of the first half. Just that physicality of Dayton and Holmes down low started to wear on UMass as we got late here in the second half. The big fellow, the South Carolina transfer, he was active in the first half. Blocked mm -hmm. the shot, he was all over the floor, but he had to go to the bench with two fouls. See if Dominguez comes in for Conte if he makes this free throw. He makes it. So Dominguez will check in for Conte, who will leave with two. And a little pressure now by UMass because there's 12.7 to play. Clock is down to four. Elvis along the baseline, trying to tip around. Saved by Thompson, and the half comes to a close. And UMass, a 12-4 run to end the half. Lead it third to start the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he, it's as if he said to himself, I'm going to the basket if I get the ball in my hands. All right, a little high flex, which is four across along the free throw line. And now a little weave by UMass to begin the second half. Weeks way downtown, short with that three. And it's saved on the sidelines by UMass and Louise. That deflection actually helps Louise get back because it was five on four for a few seconds. And it was Levesque with the deflection. He was kind of all over the place in the first half. It was a block charge call. I thought it was a charge, it ended up being a block. And that ended up sending him to the bench with two fouls. Kids, if you want to stay in the game, don't get two fouls in the first <laughs> half. The coach just automatically takes you out. You know, there's an analytic thought that you can keep some in, but I don't know about bigs. It'd be hard to keep bigs in. First possession of the second half for the Flyers. Jamani Kamara had two fouls. He was out for a lot of the first half. Somehow he keeps his pivot foot off the glass, doesn't have the angle, and Levesque with the rebound. Hey, you heard Gary Parrish there at the half talk about Kamar having a bit of a slow start, and so far that has carried over here to the second half. Ball is kicked at the top, picked up by Thompson. One minute into the second half. Back to Louise. Louise off the high screen. Good form, just couldn't finish it. And it's out of bounds. It'll be Dayton basketball. I, I know the analytics say that that's a bad shot, but if you want to take the next step as a player, that's an easy shot. You know, you got to your spot, you're at the elbow. And DeMar DeRozan has made a career of it. Obviously, Kobe, Michael. If you can make a pull up jump shot, you are really hard to guard. Well, and I think that the fact that Louise hasn't made a three since January 25th, that, that is a good shot for him. Malachi Smith between the rings, Brea. Try to get some separation. Instead goes to Holmes. There's isolation. And he got a quick first step. And he's fouled going up. And Conte just really couldn't defend him on the speed of the baseline. Uh, I, I love the move. I hate the finish. Well, watch the move. The great ball fight. Boom, boom. And now if you go under the rim, you got that protection. Mm. You know, maybe he saw Levesque there. And he was like, I'm not going to go to that side. And he was able to get fouled. Well, that's the third foul on Conte. So we'll keep an eye on that. And it'll send Holmes to the free throw line. Making his 63rd consecutive start since arriving at Dayton. And he pinballs that one around. There's Conte with three fouls. And he's kind of watching the form, and it looks good. His shot isn't ultra soft, but the form, the rotation is good. And 
But for a guy that's only a sophomore, he's got an enormous upside. Well, he fell in love with Dayton by watching that year that they didn't get the NCAA tournament yep. where Obi Toppin was so dominant. He thought, well, if he can do that there, maybe they can develop me into that kind of player. Thompson in the paint, short with that jumper. I fell in love with Dayton on my recruiting trip when they took me to Timothy's. There's <laughs> a local watering hole that's, there. That's only because you figured you could buy it at some point and not change the name. <laughs> Holmes throws it up and in. And he did just throw it up and it went in. At halftime, I talked to Dayton great Keith Walskowski. He's actually on the radio call for the Flyers because he made a bucket like that in the first half where he used his offhand, now in the second half. Here comes Kamara running the floor in the two-handed flush and a timeout called by Frank Martin. Now just like that, Dayton has increased this lead to 16. Now this was a two-point game. And, Rip. and largest lead tonight for Dayton. And now, if I'm Frank Martin, I want to get something where Levesque is getting a touchdown. Well, I thought he had some effective shot. Didn't convert, but he was close. Mm -hmm. Thompson into the paint. Thompson hopping to the basket late today. And a freshman kid on Thompson at 15 points with the win over Rhode Island. They had three freshmen in that game combined for 40 points. So that gives you a little glimpse of what UMass may have in the future. Did I play without Noah Fernandez and Matt Cross? Both very good scores, and they would help. Kamara into the paint. Kamara got like a pogo stick going up and getting that one go down. Maybe he heard Gary Parrish at halftime. Yeah. Gary Parrish called him out. He says he needs to step up his game. And he's done that. So there he is on the defensive end. Levesque, 10 footer. Five thirty-one. The lead is fourteen for Dayton. Flyers want one of the top four spots in the Atlantic Ten tournament. Levesque to the basket, tried to jam it over the top of Holmes, but Holmes got the block in there. I, I love Levesque's energy in this game. Oh, he's moving. You're he's, right. He's been all over the floor. He wants Louise to set a screen. And instead, Louise will go to the free throw line for two. That's a big time drive because there was nowhere to go. And the angle was cut off, and Louise made his own angle. He was able to get to the free throw line. He's a little bit banged up there. He's trying to stretch out that Achilles. Watch, this is really good defense. He, you get beat to the angle, and then he was able to use that Euro step, get the defender place, and get to the free throw line. Number 12, to the free throw line. I was just looking at the shorts. I like this link. See, before we were going a little too crazy, like in the 80s and stuff, like it was a little too short. And then it went that. too extreme where I felt like, felt like I was wearing like pre pants while I was in college. I, I used to roll them. And now we're at like a good seven inches. <laughs> I think that's a perfect basketball length of a short. Everything's cyclical, though. It's going to come I back. Don't know. But you know, my dad, when he played in the NBA, he wore a belt. I was like, you wore a belt? Wow, really? Yes, on his uniform. So both free throws go down. There's been some other contraptions that you wear at uniforms, and I'm really, really sure how those things were invented. <laughs> <laughs> a belt. I guess they just figured that they weren't in football, they weren't in baseball, they might as well wear it in basketball. Yeah, I guess so. There's that zone by UMass. Gray a wide open for three, and it's good. Yeah, that's the problem. If you don't get back out when you're playing that zone, it was active today at practice, too. And Holmes with the bump. Forty-eight, thirty-three. Dayton is on top. You're watching March to March. Bridget that drove up to Amherst here. That's pretty cool. And it's great because I've played in games like that when you have your, your, your family there and there's a certain pressure to it. Just to see the ball go through the rim is uh, almost a relief in a way. They had a big game against Fordham when they all went to Fordham to watch him play too. 
Levesque hands it off to Louise. Louise with the shot clock under 10. Pass is deflected. It's tipped around, and Holmes pulls it out of the air for Dayton. I think this is the defense that we were talking about before that we're seeing from Dayton. Just not a lot of depth, but they are moving all over the place. Backdoor pass, Elvis wide open, and Holmes distributing again. I mean, this is uh, something exciting for, like, put on your mixtape, put on your reel the last couple of passes there from Holmes, just making excellent basketball decisions. Yeah, there's the back, that's what you talked about, how active he is, and that was a, a composed shot by the big man. 50 to 35, 15 point lead for Dayton as kids around the country are Googling mixtape from Tim Doyle. Uh, you want to say, go to YouTube and make a <laughs> make a link then, okay? I think they understand that part of All right. it. Because everybody knows that Deron Holmes could dunk. He's dunked the most in college basketball, but the other aspects of his game, the passing, the catching, he's finished with his left hand twice, like there's a lot to take from this sample size against UMass that he has shown off a very complete package. Well, and again, as you pointed out, he's only a sophomore. He's going to get a thousand points in two years at Dayton if things go the right way. He's got 941 counting his points tonight. And that's going to do it. That was almost a violation. That is a violation. Because the pass was in the air as it went to 10 before it was touched on the other side. Frank Martin does not seem happy about that. Great catching up with him though today. You know, after all those successes at South Carolina, uh, he still has the passion at practice. He's like one of those guys you do not want to judge a book by its cover because there are so many layers to Frank. And once I've got a chance to know him, I I've really struck up a nice yeah. friendship with him. He cares so deeply about the game and his players. Blake, these threes, no good. Weeks with the rebound. Outlet pass to Thompson. He's going to speed right toward the hoop. It would have counted anyway because the rim contact. 13 point game. But if you see Frank, like, uh, back in his old days at Kansas State, he looks, like, uh, pretty intimidating. Yes. In and out. Louise with the rebound. He's wearing his, uh, his Woo Sox hat today, the Wooster Red Sox, the AAA affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. Bunch of buddies in town to watch this game. Thompson again. Is Thompson has 10. Two freshmen of 22 combined points for UMass. Oh, well, they're definitely getting valuable minutes and valuable experience as Frank's going to try to build this culture here mm -hmm. of guys that, you know, hopefully stick around. They skip it to the corner. Elvis for three, and it's good. Splashes it home from the sideline. That's just excellent offense out of Dayton. Got into what they wanted to get into. They've done a great job of having the defense converge and then making the right play via pass. Five and ten from beyond the arc, 50%. And a foul on Malachi Smith. Here's that last three for Dayton. Yeah, because Kamar is such a danger diving, right? You got all that help defense coming towards him. I'll say this right now. This is the best team in the Atlantic 10. You're watching right now in the Dayton Flyers. And if if they remain healthy and they make the tournament, which their coach said is an invitation tournament, right. the NCAA tournament, I wouldn't want to play them. Yeah, the, the third matchup, if there is one, between VCU and Dayton, well, that's pretty good theater right there if it does happen. Little jab step, pull up jumper, it's good. Nothing but net. Pretty shot. UMass now four for its last four from the floor. 12 point game. On seal. To Blakey. Entry pass to Kamar, tipped away by Weeks. How tall do you have Louise at in your program? Six foot seven. So do I. If he's six seven, 
I'm 7 2. Well, you needed to walk up next to him. Just I, to I, I, a creepy go shoulder to shoulder right. with him. Yeah, without telling him what I was doing. Yeah, that's what I do. Here's Kamara to the basket. Easy path to the hoop. He'll lay it in. Yeah, he, I think he's a little bit closer to like 6 5, but I appreciate that. The energy and the effort to go 6 7. Yeah. Bass has made six of its last seven field goals. Martin, offensive foul as Amseal was able to get position. Eleven forty-six to play here in the second half. It's Phoenix Suns. We didn't really break down if this is the year Chris Paul is going to stay healthy finally and get his first championship, but he's a huge NBA fan. And Nick Claxton is the guy who tries to model his yeah, game after the You said that's a good comparison. Nick may be about two inches taller, but similar build and length. And, and this year, learning to play was being the focal point of the of the pregame adjustments. That one's off the front of the rim, no good, because he's doubled every single night he plays. They've done a better job of finding weeks. Levesque trying to get Holmes off his feet, cannot. Amseal with another rebound. And it's seven rebounds for Amseal. Again, the Staten team's been banged up all year tonight. Not, not, they don't have Mike Sharp jumps. There's Holmes with an easy jab. I mean, that was way easy. Sharp jumps is back at Dayton. Uh, he's under the weather. Holmes now with 20 points. Adding to his NCAA leading dunks tonight. Diggins. Got it to Louise, but I don't think Louise realized it. Sixteen point game. Back to a pass to Blake. And a jam, which was way too easy. That's not going to make the coach happy when you watch that over again. The Flyers shooting over 60% from the field. Their execution has been spot on from the three minute mark of the first half yeah. into the second half. And Louise continues to struggle here in the second half. Four points, one rebound. He had 10 points, five rebounds in the first half. We mentioned Dayton. They're going one or two deep, basically, on the bench. And there was a huge thud. Oof. Well, the hit the ground hard. Picked up his third foul on this. He got Dominguez's leg on the way down, which may have protected him a little bit because he was heading to the floor. He has battled all night. The, the energy has been there. The effort has been there. For the 6'10 senior South Carolina transfer. The foul trouble kind of stunted him in this game. I thought it really affected his team in a negative way. You know, because they're down so many guys. Absolutely. They, they need his energy. Holmes. Couldn't catch it. Shot clock is under 10 to the wing. Extra pass on seal. Baseline jumper. It's good. They're going to call it a three. He was just beyond the line. And it's a 62 41 lead. It's the largest lead of the night. And it's a 9 0 run. Yeah, what I loved about that pass from Holmes, he hit his teammate right in the shooting pocket. And it actually allowed him to make an easier pass. You know, there's a difference when you're a shooter and you catch the ball in your shoelaces or you yes. catch the ball in the numbers. And he was able to catch the ball in the numbers. That way the defense came out and respected him. Good ball movement, swinging around, but it was actually all set up. Holmes won't get the assist. If he was Wayne Gretzky, he would have got the assist because that's what they do in hockey. It's always the pass to the pass. But that actually set up that shot, that cross-court look. Or now Connor McDavid. <laughs> Stone, last night, I think it was... Louise makes the free throw. Whatever milestone it was, it's always like this. A point total. Then Gretzky is like ten spots ahead of him in the milestone because Wayne just blew out of the water every record there. It's the only sport where there actually is no conversation about who the greatest is. I would agree with that. Second shot is good. Other sports, there's a. 
uh, a lather-filled debate yes. from season to season, from decade to decade. I was in Salt Lake City for the All-Star Game, LeBron James. And I'm sure there was a debate there. And I think that LeBron, his argument's going to get stronger as we get older, just from a longevity standpoint. Mm. 20 years he's been doing it. Under nine minutes to play. Shot clock is at five. Malachi Smith to Brea. Brea fires from the wing. No good. The rebound by the Minutemen. Ruiz doesn't get the bounce. Dominguez doesn't get the second shot to go. Another block for the Flyers. Brea is wide open for three. No good. That, that was actually a shot where he probably could have passed it one more time. And Holmes with a big block. Dante tried to go up, and Holmes just ripped it down. Add that to the YouTube uh, reel or mixtape, whatever you want to call it. The old school mixtape. <laughs> UMass now 0 for its last five from the floor. As that ball is out of bounds, it'll be off Brea. Uh, Dayton, they are growing every game more confident. And St. Louis, not necessarily in that order. And we were talking to Anthony about this stretch that they've had and how good they have been. And he said, you know, I, I don't look at it as a stretch. I look at it from game to game. And he was really, you know, serious about it. He said, you guys think about it as a stretch. But I look at it as game to game. But I think you can see the continuity that he's looking for evolve during this winning streak. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I feel like baseball players, they look at a stretch. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes, and maybe that's partly why it was in my head that this is a really good stretch for them. Here's Kamara to Holmes up top. 7-10 to play here in the second half. Holmes gets it back. He's already reached 20 points. Shot clock is at 5. Baseline fader is good. Another part of his game. Just magnificent today in so many different areas. The total, total package. Mm -hmm. They're playing zone now. With, one, three, one. Yeah, Kamara up top. And, and you're playing a zone like this, you want to have your hands fully extended at all times. You don't want to have them down, you want to close up those passing lanes. Levesque for the baseline, too strong. He'll get it back. Shot clock didn't reset, by the way. Ruiz, or Luis, I should say. Who's better? He's good. I don't even know if he realized the shot clock had it reset. But don't ask the, Luis to make a three, but he could score in a lot of other ways yes. inside that three-point line. He's got 18 tonight and seven rebounds. By the way, UMass averages 29 points off the bench. And they have one tonight. Some of that is that their bench is starting now. On seal, off the glass, no good, no angle. Yeah, with all the injuries, Renee Montgomery put that out of yeah. time. She was disappointed in the lack of bench production, but because of so many moving parts with... Martin and Dominguez and Cross, they've just had a kind of ping-pong guys in and out of that lineup 64 45 the score You know, and, and I think that's gonna make getting back to a debate or an argument The longevity of which LeBron has played mm -hmm. that's gonna make his debate stronger and stronger years now when he hangs it up and see Anthony Grant there Speaking of longevity, I don't know if he's putting like cucumbers on his eyes. The guy looks amazing. He looks amazing. The, the white beard does give it away a little bit. It's a little Lovey Smith-ish. Very much a Lovey Smith look. <laughs> but, but if he had no beard, he may look better than I did. Well, you had, you had an interesting <laughs> way to pat yourself on the back. You had an interesting uh, exchange with him about his style and how it's evolved since he was the head coach at VCU when he played 40 minutes of non-stop full court pressure to where he is now in the style of the game. I, he said the rules don't, don't allow him to play like that anymore. I, I felt like that was uh, a shot at... Mm. Right up for three. He connects. He's got to go. The lack of physicality now in the game. You, know, you can't pressure guys like that and get into them and play like that. And that's why he no longer plays like that. 
Because his example for that was, well, you don't just see football handed around to the running back. Right. And why is that? Because the rules are different. Right? Wide receivers have a little more freedom and liberty. Mara, no good. Malachi Smith with the rebound, heading the break, going to home, pulls it out. Extra bounce pass, Kamara for three, no good. He can make those. Another great pass by Holmes. Yeah. Well, there's the steal by Kamara. Here comes Malachi Smith to Elvis. Elvis for three. Yes! Now they're just playing in the backyard, aren't they? It doesn't seem that way. The yes. fluidness. It, it, it just seems like this is a team that is growing with confidence. Well, back for three. It's good. He carries it. He doesn't do it that often. That's only his fourth three-pointer of the year. Yeah, and in his first three years at South Carolina, he actually made zero. Right. He's evolving as a player. Well, I mean, he is shooting 13% from three. Evolving. <laughs> Elvis again, this time no good. Dominguez the rebound. It's a slow evolution. Yes. Louise looking in to Levesque. Levesque in the paint short. And Holmes with another rebound. Holmes now with six rebounds to go along with 22 points. Malachi Smith quietly has seven assists for Dayton. I asked Malachi Smith at halftime if he meant to bank that shot in. Oh, did you ask yes, him? Yes, and he did not. He started laughing. <laughs> Holmes from the baseline. Not enough on it. And Louise, bringing it up for UMass, going to the basket, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. Three twenty-two to play here in the second half. Uh, impressive, impressive performance from the Dayton Flyers. They didn't win the Atlantic Ten tournament. So I think are realistic, but sometimes publicly they're not um, as transparent as Anthony was today. Just talking about how it's an invitational, and we need to be invited. We have to play well to be invited. Louise made one misplay. Eyeball test today. Oh, they're, they're, they look good. But, you know, the, the resume is not something that jumps off the page. It's, the A-10 this year has just been ravaged by injuries yes. throughout the entire conference. What I think it's going to happen is going to make the A-10 tournament in Brooklyn unbelievable, I think, anyway. Here's Kamara. Look out. Hmm. Gapara did not think that he fouled him going up. Yeah, eyeball test. I, I think he got all ball. But when you attack like that, you get the calls. Usually players, when, when they're calling for the replay, they know. <laughs> like, just like I knew Smith didn't mean to bank in that shot because he had that smile on his face, like... I use the same stuff I use when players are lying to referees. I use that with my family at home. I'm like, ah, I, I know that face. You took that cookie. Yeah, so you knew that athletics would carry over to something. <laughs> Kamara makes the first free throw. Back to a 20-point game. Four guys in double figures out right now for Dayton. Louise with the rebound. So what Kamara's done tonight. Foul trouble in the first half sort of quieted him. Last eight minutes, UMass is two for its last ten. Are you surprised that Holmes and Kamara are still out there? I just think that they'll probably run it down a little bit more, but they don't have a lot on the bench. But I guess they can start bringing some others in. Levesque over the top, can't get it to go. Well, I guess that's to your point. Kamara looks like he's shaken up. Bids by conference, according to our own Jerry Palm. Big 10 8, Big 12 8, SEC 8. The Big East might creep in another one. And then the A 10, dating back to 2017, have had multiple bids. Have not been a one bid league since 2005. That's how good this conference has been. 
And what a great addition Davidson was to this conference. Oh, yeah. Remember how many Southern championships they won, and then Bob McHale, there was an immediate impact when they came to the A-10. Off the glass, no good. Kapara thought about going right to the rim. Instead, gave it back out. Thompson, Kapara. Louise from the A-10 logo, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. That's the third foul on Brea. What do you think about Louise, freshman, and what he's been able to do? He could be the best player in the league in four years. So, it's a lot that can go on, but then you got to keep working. But he has a big time offensive package. Now, he does not shoot the three well right now, and that's something he's going to have to work on in the offseason. But you go from seven points a game in non conference to right. really doubling that in conference, it's harder to score in conference, Tom. The, the coaches know each other, the strategy is better. No like, doubt. What you just alluded to. He's his second free throw is good. 71 53. With 140 to play here in the second half. A little pressure by UMass Yule in the backcourt. He's number 42. Well, KG tried to get it across the timeline, but it's cut off by Gapara. Gapara going to the basket, and he's fouled. He's got a couple free throws. Been there at the end of the bench. You've cherished these games. He got some. Ice under the floor, a little chilly in here. You've sat there for about two hours. Maybe you had one too many Gatorades. And now you got to come in the game and you know, a little sugar belly. You're not going to go break a press against UMass. Not easy to do. Yeah, Holmes, uh, who's done for the night, 22 points, seven rebounds, three assists. He's to the left. And Kamara, 11 points and three rebounds. Kamara missed the free throws. But now as you're, you're in the game like Yule, who doesn't get a chance to play that much, you're hoping for an open shot. Here's Blake, the, he gets enough of them, doesn't he? 110 to play, shot is blocked, and a foul is called. So Ama Filet will go to the free throw line. Yeah, absolutely. You're also don't you don't want to like blow out a muscle because it, that is not easy to do. You've not played, so you're really not loose at all. It's not like you're on the the, the bench there riding a bike. You're just sitting there. First free throw is good, not the butt net. And look at the bench. That's a sign of a good teammate. Yeah. I have guys that would get knocked down, and I would like I wouldn't necessarily run over to help them up. Pretty good form too. He missed uh, the second one after making the first one. And the reason they're that excited is because those are his first points. Like first was, points of the year. If it was like a John Sadak, like, I don't know if I'd run over immediately help him out. I'm just kidding, John. <laughs> Shut up. I love working with you. Here's Louise. Kelly. <laughs> Shot clock is under 10. He's again right side of the lane. Baseline fader is no good. Now Yule looks up at the clock as he brings it up. KG just running out the time, but want to take some shots. Schuler with the rebound. And Yule looks up again at the shot clock. Tries to see the difference. Nine seconds between shot clock and game clock. Well, KG thought about the three, heads to the basket, and doesn't get the shot to go down. If Kelly was there, he clogged it up. Last 10 seconds left. Frank Martin's heading towards center court already. He's faced his uh, his buddy from when they were 14 years old a number of times. This is the first time he faces them while here at UMass. They embrace and Dayton with an impressive 72-54 victory over the Minutemen. This was a two-point game late in the first half.